Okay, well, welcome back to my uh, quick overview of how I would approach shared folders within Google Drive. And um, here's just my three really quick recommendations for how I think you should work with shared folders. Number one, I think you should share folders with other people and give them only can view access to the folder. The only exception here is if you're actually like co-managing this folder with someone. Uh, then if you trust them and, and there's an agreement on how you're going to work with the folder and they know what they're doing with Google Drive, then, then that's probably a good option. Uh, then of course if you want people to be able to edit documents, then I would give edit access to people on a per document basis. And you don't have to do that one document at a time. You can do a select a whole bunch of files and then set the shared settings on those files. And then thirdly, uh, to save yourself time and effort, if you have access to the groups tool, then you can use the groups tool to share uh, files and folders and that way you only have to edit membership of the group once instead of going in and removing or adding someone to every single document. So those are my recommendations. Now let's actually take a look at what this would look like in practice. Switch over to Google Drive. Okay, and here we go. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, re-enter the shared settings on our December 14th document. And I'll type in those people that I'm working with that we want to share the document with, whereas before we, uh, we gave them edit access. What I recommend that you do okay, is I recommend that you give people view access, not edit access to folders. So I give everyone on the team view access. I click share and save. Now, if I go in as another user, I'll go in now again as TTC03. Now if I go into shared with me, I also notice that project A is now shared with me. Well, that's nice. I can still drag this and locate it in my drive for myself, right? There's project A. I can open it up, have a look at it. You'll notice that all the documents inside that folder are also available to me. However, because the folder is view only, the only level of permission that cascades down to those documents is view access. So if I go in here to this Jeff's doc December 14th, okay, and I click on that, you'll see that I cannot edit the document. Nothing. No editing. Now. What if I'm a little bit annoyed by that? Hey, I'm supposed to be able to edit this document. Well, no problem. I just go up here, look up who the owner of the document is, and, oh, of course, I can't look that up. Uh, I simply come in here to the share button and I say request access for the rolling e email address. So I put in my own email address and actually come to think of it, my partner who I work with also needs access. So. I can send this request. What that does is it sends an email message off to the owner of the document. All they have to do is receive that email. They'll see that 03 and 04 are requesting access. I click accept. It automatically grants them edit access to the document and they're off to the races. Now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, that's a big pain in the rear end if I have to do that every single document. And I agree. What if I knew ahead of time that those people were going to need edit access to those files? Well, let me show you. Let's go back here to the owner of the document, TTC02. So what I would do is I'm now looking at the Project A folder. I just find the select all check mark. I check off every single document. I go up here to the share button. And of course, I can share this document with the whole team, right? And I can give them edit access to the documents. Now the key here is I'm giving them edit access on the document per document basis, meaning no matter where these documents get located or organized, these people will always have this level of access. That's the beauty of it. And that was this was really no more work for me and a lot less headache down the road. Now if we go back to our other user, let's go back into TTC03. Let's do the same example before. TTC03 is sitting here looking at Jeff's doc December 14th, and he's thinking to himself, gee, I want to relocate this document to my TTC03 docs. 
he goes like this, he drags it over there, and you know what? It doesn't go anywhere. Because of course I'm not allowed to drag files out of a folder because I only have edit access to the folder, right? Okay, so that's a great thing. Now what if I'm really annoyed? Hey, I really want this to be in my TTC03 docs. Well, no problem. Like I showed you in that other video, you can add this document using the control key on a Windows machine or an option key on a Mac and drag that document to TC0 through. Now, to this folder, you'll notice it has the word add beside it. So now what I've done is in addition to this document being located in the Project A folder, it's also located in my TTC03 folder. And the beauty of this is no matter where this document gets relocated, I still have access to it. In fact, let's have a look at that. I go back here to the document owner. The document owner then decides, gee, you know what? Mm, uh, what is this doing in Project A? It doesn't belong in Project A. This belongs in Project B. They drag, right? Not control drag, but just regular drag. That means it is no longer in Project A, which means that when let's say user number four goes in to look at the project A folder, they go, hey, where the heck did the December 14th document go? Shoot, I was just working on that, but here's the good news. Sure, they are inconvenienced by the fact that it's disappeared from the folder. That's life. The person who organizes that folder relocated it. But the good news is, if they do a search for it, they still have access to it. Why? Because the document was shared with them at the, in the document's actual settings. So long as it, the document is shared with them within the document settings, it requires the person to go into that document setting and re remove their name intentionally for them to lose access to that document. So I just go in here, I click on the name of that document, and there it is, and I still have edit access. And I can keep working, I can make it to my meeting, I don't have to get mad at anybody. Now at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, uh, gee, this is starting to sound a little complicated. Maybe Google Docs isn't such a great idea. Maybe we should just go back to using the file server. Um, but first of all, let's recall the fabulousness of co-editing one document online. For that reason alone, uh, I would never give up Google Docs. But more than that, I actually love the organization of Google Docs and I love the shared aspect of Google Docs. It's just, it requires people to really understand how the organization works. If I flip back over to the TTC02 account where we started, let's, let me just show you, let me show you my favorite example. So let's say that uh, I go into my shared with me documents and, and uh, there's been a big project with Acme Marketing and this big shared folder was shared with me, okay? This, and this happens to me all the time on projects. It used to happen to me all the time working with file servers as well. And you go into this folder and it's chock full of a whole bunch of subfolders. And inside these subfolders are all the different files that you need to be working on. And, you know, I go in here to invoices and there's some files and I gotta go into artwork and there's some files and so on and so forth, right? And what inevitably happens to me with this, in these situations is one of two things. One, there's like so many more files in this massive collection of folders and subfolders than I actually need to be working with. And so I'm always wading through uh, all the stuff I don't care about just to find those five or six files that I do care about. And the other thing that happens to me often is the person who organized all these files did it in a way that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Maybe they just think differently than me. Or let's be honest, a lot of times these, these uh, folders, these collective folders, have become this sort of bloated monstrosity because no one took the helm in organizing them. And so everyone just threw their own folders in there and everyone's got their own different logic of how things are organized. And so what you got is this total mess but it, you have to navigate it because it's not your folder. You know Who are you to go in and start rearranging things, right? You just want to go and find the files that you want. So let's say in this situation that there's only like four f documents in here that I even care about uh, that I'm working on right now on this project. Wouldn't it be nice when I logged in if I could just be like, show me those four files. 
And what I love about this is I can do that. In fact, I can even subcategorize those files in ways that make sense to me. So maybe I go in here and I notice that, okay, I go into the Edmonton folder and I say, gee, these two files really should go into my instructor documents folder. So you know what? No problem. I'm just going to, remember, this is something we learned before. I'm going to hold down the control key on a Windows machine, option on a Mac, and drag these over to instructor documents. Now, they don't leave this folder. They can't, right? Because hopefully they were only shared with me. The, the folder access was only edit on, or uh, view only. And maybe I'll go into a different folder. So I'll go into artwork, and I'll grab just this one drawing that I'm working on. Okay, this one using the control key is going to go into needs review because I need to actually work on that drawing. Okay, sounds good. And then also in the client notes, meetings, and then sales meetings, there's some documents here that I care about. So I go in here, I select, let's say, all of them. And this one is actually related to my project B. So I actually just control drag these over to project B. And so here's why I just love Google Docs. There's this huge monstrosity of a folder called Acme Marketing. That was gonna all, all these documents can stay there. They're organized there. That's great. If I ever really need to find them again, I can navigate through here and find them. But the ones that I really care about, I've already put them in the folders that make sense to me. When I go into my needs review folder, look at that. There's that drawing that I need to work on, right? When I go into my uh, samples, uh, sorry, when I go into my instructor documents, there they are. There's the ones that I threw in there. And when I go into project B, there's those documents are. And it's the same document linked in multiple places because I understand that folders are actually labels. And for me, this is what's really made Google Docs uh, such a game changer for making me so much more organized and productive. Because all of my documents that I care about, I get to personally organize them in a way that makes sense for me, which I always did before, but the problem is, well, I did that before on my own computer, but the problem is the files that were organized on my computer were different copies of files than the files organized on your computer. So then we wasted a ton of time working out whose version was whose. Or we used the file server. In the file server, though, I didn't have a choice. I had to use the organization in the file server. In Google Docs or Google Drive, I can do both. So this is my favorite thing. So, in review, what are my recommendations regarding shared folders? I recommend that you share folders using the can view setting. Now, I put an asterisk here. The exception here, of course, is if you're actually co-managing a folder with someone, then, of course, that's a good opportunity or a good example of when you should have mutual edit access to that folder. If we're both in charge of rearranging this folder, adding files to this folder, etc., then go ahead and do can edit. <clears throat> Obviously, the can edit setting is much more flexible, but with great power comes great responsibility. So that's my first suggestion. Number two, uh, you certainly want people to be able to edit documents, so share uh, with people with the can edit access on a per document basis. Now you don't need to go into each document one at a time. As I showed you, you can just make a multiple selection using either select all within a folder or do a search parameter or what have you. Do a big select all and then just share it out with a group of people or one person. And then recommended practice number three, not something I showed you, but if you're aware of the tool groups and it's something that's available to you and is a viable option, Groups is a great way to share so that instead of you having to share documents per person, you could just say share these share this document with the entire work group. And then you only ever have to manage the membership of that group to manage the level of permissions for all documents shared with that group. It's less work. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. You're more than welcome to send me an email if you have any questions or if you'd like to inquire about any custom training. You're more than welcome to visit our website at the Technology Training Center. Have a look at our course outlines for uh, the various Google Apps workshops that we offer as well as the long list of software and computer training that we also offer. And good luck with Google Drive and shared folders.